statistically every day 136 people dies from an opioid overdose. This number is larger than amount of people dying from guns and in car crashes. Uh, the United States, uh, they, they are fighting with this uh, crisis for many years, but the, the trend uh, is not positive. And today we will talk about the AI solution, which may help to tackle this problem. At the beginning, I want to describe the workflow which we uh, employed to solve the problem. First, we collected the data, typically selected features which are relevant to the um, opioids and um, doctors. Then we used uh, machine learning algorithms to detect anomalies. Then we scored the samples of the data set we collected. And then to somehow represent it to the specialists, we prepared a human readable form of the data by reducing the dimension. Then we had to review the results with clinical team because we didn't have the domain knowledge to tackle that problem alone. The data set uh, consisted of a records for 125 patients who used more than 10,000 opioid drugs received from 600 prescribers. So the data set was so huge that um, a human being cannot analyze it in any reasonable time. As for features, we used the combined information about patients, opioid drugs, and prescribers. For patients, we used such features as age, gender, admission and discharge dates, length of a stay, and others. For prescribers, we used its identification number, uh, state, uh, city of origin, and whether it was individual or organization. For opioid medicine, uh, we used amount of a prescribed medicine, cost of a unit, daily supply, and days of a supply, as well as route of administration and dosage form. Route of administration means, means was it like oral or intravenous, and dosage form, tab, tabs, or other. We collected any possible information we could find related to the patient, prescriber, and the medicine, three interacting entities in this case. We covered uh, items one and two, we fitted a model and uh, scored the samples, and now you see the results of a dimensionality reduction. We wanted to understand what kind of a results have we received. So this is a TSNE 2D projection. Move the data from the 10, 20, 50, 100 dimensions to any human interpretable form, which is 2D projections now, what you see in front of you. One point here stands for one record. And one record is one stay of a patient in a hospital for a particular amount of days during which the patient takes uh, the drug opioid in some form within some route of administration according to the recorded data. And remember the score. The score is how likely this patient stay is anomalous. The amount of a drug over this time was either much larger or much lower than typical. Based on the score, we painted all the points in two colors, as you see. Cyan are regular points, normal dosages, and red. Red means something was wrong with this patient and this state. What exactly? We don't know yet, but we already can spot some dependencies here, right? For sure, you can see some standalone points, but some points form clusters. The clusters should potentially stay for something happening wrong there regularly. Having this picture, we decided then to uh, verify it, right? And showed it to the clinical team and told them the story. And it was the moment where we received a huge pushback. They asked, what does it mean? How can we understand it better? 
and we decided to somehow represent the data better. We split this data into two subsets. To the left, only anomalous points, and to the right, only regular points. Second, we overlaid additional information over the points. In this case, it was age. We bucketized the age, 10 years uh, buckets. Now their feedback was much different. The insight was the following. It is typical in the industry that patients over 60 years old are participating in the process called end of life management. And very often part of this end of life management is uh, giving to patients systematically opioids so that uh, they are not depressed and they are living their last days uh, more happily. Remember the clusters, the upper one, the rightmost and the bottom one. Pay attention to the bottom one. Yeah, it is completely made of uh, red points. Very suspicious. We could say that it is made only of a overdosing opioids patients. But when we overlay the, the age, we see that it is almost entirely made from patients of older age. It means that most of the people, they are just old people living in hospices and uh, taking their medicine. While in the cluster uh, at the top, there were much more uh, points with um, less age. We did a second overlay, length of stay. Uh, if the amount of a drug was large, but also a length of a stay was large, then the average concentration taken by your people will be not so high. And this mask helps us to understand exactly that. Earlier, we understood that the old people living their last days are mostly at the bottom. A large amount of points colored uh, pink at the bottom. See, so it means it just the, uh, the old people on opioids living for a year and more in a hospices. And that's okay. While at the top are many green dots. It means that the, it is relatively young people, relatively short stays. It's about 10 days getting anomalous amounts of a drug. We identified 135. Remember, it was 12,000s of opioid derivatives at the beginning, but uh, only 135 of them were detected to be overprescribed. Secondly, we detected more than 500 patients who actually overdose or underdose. After the review with the clinical team, we identified 183 cases. They have been confirmed to be anomalous by the clinical team. As for prescribers, out of 600 uh, prescribers, there were uh, 374 suspicious MPIs examined and um, about 100 put to a further review. To sum up, it took one data scientist one month to analyze 125 records of patients and 600 prescribers. As a result, we elicited much shorter list of 500 patients and 300 prescribers for further review for the physicians. Let's try to estimate what amount of work would it take a physician to do the same work? So the cost of such analysis was X amount of thousands of US. The team uh, was made of one data scientist. The time of inference when the models are ready and trained and the pipeline is written, it takes half a second. More importantly, the analysis is reproducible. Whenever you, you receive additional data, you just rerun the algorithms and you have updated the results. On the contrary, the human physician, uh, on average, it takes from 10 to 30 minutes to review a story of one patient. So for 125 patients, it will take for one physician 3,600 calendar days to do the same analysis that we did in one month. If we take 10 physicians, they will work entire year to do the same analysis. An important factor is that it will not be reproducible. Whenever a new data comes or you will be or you will decide to do it again, you will have to start from scratch and it means another year. 
And if we recalculate this year uh, for 10 uh, physicians and multiply it by average physician salary in uh, New York, uh, it will cost you two million and uh, 400,000 US dollars. Profits are clearly visible. If we talk about the perspective, it's a potential tool to stop the pandemic, the opioid pandemic, switching the focus of attention to address the causes not fight because the consequences, understand, reveal the roots of this problem and then intervene there. And the roots are overprescribing physicians, people who allow to do it from one side and from the second side, people who want to do it. So understand both sides, identify people who do that and to intervene on that level. And uh, you will not be forced to handle the consequences because you eliminated the roots of a problem. I think it takes about 20 years, go through all stages of education and uh, practice work to become actually a physician and start working with patients. Now you have to do a paperwork, sitting instead of a monitor and reviewing the histories of patients, what amount of drugs they took, where they bought it, and other terribly boring thing. So for doctors, the technology gives the ability to stop wasting their time on paperwork, substitute it with AI tools, which is rather extension to their powers. Then arrival, doctors are now have a ability to work with patients.